Nate P here. So we're here at the University of Minnesota. We're going to be going into the uh, FWCB Fisheries and MAISRC faculty and staff offices to meet with our new friend, Professor Dr. Solomon R. David. We are here to talk about fish. It's like my cat. Hello. Hello. Hello there. Nate. Solomon David. Solomon David. We, oh, we're doing pictures now. Hello. Yeah, this is film. <laughs> it's the long, it's the long weird cuts that people uh, crave. What's your official title? I am an assistant professor of aquatic ecology in the Department of Fisheries, Wildlife, and Conservation Biology at the University of Minnesota. <sighs> what do you think about that? Can you say your title backwards? Okay, backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Minnesota of the University Biology Conservation Wildlife, fisheries, ecology, aquatic, aquatic. David R. Solomon, Lord, Lab Gar, Lord. Yes. Everyone gets my name switched around all the time. Anyway, I knew so this works out. I did my research. Yeah, like I appreciate it, that. Yeah, I did my own research. I did my <laughs> research too. So we're, you know. Jeez, you researched a dumb guy. I researched a smart guy. <laughs> Pretend I'm like a five-year-old because okay. I basically am. So right. is this a long nose? This is guard? a long nose guard. This one in particular, I believe, was 23 years old. Wow. Now is this alive or dead? This one is dead. <laughs> Can I smell it? Can I kiss I'd it? I'd go with the underbelly there for. The the uh, best smell, the most aromatic. Is this a fish that you caught? Yeah, out in uh, Mississippi. We work on some floodplains, looking at connection between the river and the floodplain and how cool. that's important to fish. Oh, See yeah. that those scales aren't your uh, bass or bluegill scales either. No, they're like armor. They're made out of basically tooth enamel. So Really? So, yep. Again, I don't know jack shit about a lot of things. I do appreciate uh, fishing for native fish. I appreciate the whole conservation piece about mm -hmm. it. I think it's really important. So native species can be good indicators of water quality yeah. or the health of the overall ecosystem. Does, would a gar fit into that whole uh, canary in the coal mine type? It can, it can. And that's because they depend on what we call aquatic connectivity. So connection between, let's say, a river and the floodplain or rivers and lakes and streams. Mm -hmm. So fish like gars, you may not think of like a gar when you think about migratory species, but long-nosed gars actually can be pretty highly migratory. So you might think of a migratory fish, thinking like salmon, right? Or yeah. maybe trout. But long-nosed gars, especially up here in the Great Lakes region, they will swim upstream to spawn mm -hmm. just like salmon do. So they they can represent a good fish passage or aquatic connectivity between a river and a stream. So if you have a dam, mm -hmm. it keeps your fish from moving up and down uh, right and sure. keeping them from spawning. Well, when I was a kid, I was always into dinosaurs. And so yeah. when I first saw a gar, I saw this fish that looked like an alligator with fins instead of legs. And yeah. it was an alligator gar, which if you look uh, behind you here, that is the head wow. of an alligator gar. This was a seven foot 10 inch alligator gar wow. and it was 48 years old. Have you eaten these fish before? I have. I didn't eat these two fish, um, but I have eaten alligator gar before. It tastes really good. It's kind of like a cross between chicken and fish. There's no alligator gar in Minnesota, correct? There aren't alligator gar <laughs> in Minnesota. The closest to Minnesota where you're going to find alligator gar would be Illinois, where okay. they're trying to restore alligator gar populations uh. because we wiped out gator gars from a lot of their native range. You hear the old uh, trope of, you know, these fish eat other species that take away from our walleye mm -hmm. and bass. Mm -hmm. Is that something that people still kind of hang on to? They do. When you see people you know, talking about, oh, they're trash fish or garbage fish, yeah. and we want to get rid of them because they're bad for the bass or the walleye, they're not. The actual research that's been done is like most predators, they're going to eat whatever's most abundant. So yeah. that's usually stuff like shad or maybe sure. some other types of minnows. Um, sometimes it might be panfish, yeah. but like any other predator, they help maintain balance in an ecosystem, right? Sure. If you have too many bluegills, you can get them stunted to yeah. where it's not the type of fish you want to catch on no. your show. No, well, we don't give a shit our shore <laughs> lunch. No, there's nothing in here. This is still a work in progress. As you can see, there's not a ton of lab stuff yet. Yeah. Um, but we do have some of the important fixtures. So Whoa, you thought that one was big. Jeez. This is the biggest one that we've got from our research so far. Jeez, look at these teeth, man. Yeah, it's man. got teeth just kind of spilling out. It's, it's eight feet long. Really? Eight feet, one inch. It's only four inches off of the known world record for alligator gar. 56 years old. But we know that they can live likely over 100 years. They're native species. They're important. Yeah. They represent healthy aquatic ecosystems. Sure. They're food for other fish. They help maintain balance yeah. in, you know, 
fish populations. They've also got poisonous eggs, so Interesting. people should not be eating gar caviar. What's something that common angler can do to help preserve waterways, to help uh, maintain populations? a fish like this. I think, you know, supporting outreach to your fellow anglers about the value of these fish. So sure. if you're out fishing, your buddy like, oh, we don't like these garbage fish or these trash fish. I think recognizing that these native fish are important parts of our native biodiversity. So kind of spreading the word from Spread person word. to person. All right, so we've seen some dead fish, preserved fish here. So when okay. you come back, not yeah. if you come back, when you come back, we'll have more live gars and everything. Cool. We can check out some other fish in the lab. Yeah, let's All do right. it. All right, so watch your step. So we will eventually have fish here. There's plenty of room for experiments. And then on the other side are the sort of remaining fish from my predecessor. Now Solomon, is it true that you had to battle your predecessor to the death to take this position? It was close to the death because <laughs> I needed, you know, the institutional knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Some fish labs might be very, I don't know how else to say it, much more modern looking. This has been set up, I think, for, you know, close to 30 years. Yeah. And so everything's functional. We can, you know, we can modify the uh, photo period, like the lighting and the filtration, the temperature oh, of the water. Sure. So it's all very functional. Yeah. Uh, but I compare it to, like, kind of working a steam engine in the age of uh, working maybe, uh, you know, a bullet train. This is a slim person's lab. <laughs> no, I can't get out, no. Welcome. You're now my permanent lab assistant. <laughs> Nate's gonna feed some rainbow trout that we got here. These are They're rainbows very here? very eager. Yeah. But they aren't actually native to no. Minnesota. Look at that one damn near jump clear Ravenous. out of the water. There we go, we got one guy. I often drop fish, so, okay, got it. There you go. Rainbow trout. Behind you is largemouth bass. There's like 200 of them. We'll eventually have the gars in here too. Those are some golden shiners, basically bait fish. Oh, sure. These are juvenile lake sturgeon. Get the cutest sturgeon. one, would you? All right. Now, how old are these babies? They are about seven years old. Really? Are in the you wild, shitting me? Be, in the wild, they'd be a little bit bigger. Yeah. The sturgeon grows slow. They're gentle beasts, aren't they? Yeah, and they, you know, they've wow. got some some spikes. They've got these scutes. The scutes, yeah. Out of the board cube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got a selection of fish for you. That's your buddy, the largemouth bass. Never opened a bucket before. Oh, look at him. <laughs> He's got some poo poo in there, it oh, looks like. Yeah, yeah. He made poop. So you got a couple of native species, yeah. lake sturgeon, largemouth. You've okay. got a, oh, an invasive stuff. species, that is a rainbow trout. So this is a common carp. You know yeah. I love carp. Oh, they look so different when they're tiny babies. I mean, they're, oh, oh, uh, come on, bad. Oh, please. I don't know if I dare touch the sturgeon. You can if you want. I don't want to pull him too far out of the water. He'll, he'll be all right. If what you a beautiful he's fish. Much. That is so neat. He's, his exoskeleton is you know, like... They're cartilaginous. Yeah, it's, he's sharp as a tack. The tenderest kiss. Here's the wily rainbow trout. Yeah, that one's going to be your uh, oh, squirliest. There he is. He's yeah, too squirrely. Squirly. Let me not, try to grab him for you. Yeah. yeah Are they the most viscous fish? The, the silkiest fish. We got ourselves a little... Oh. Little largemouth bass. Right. It's funny how the the colors, the pigments, and everything are different when they're mm -hmm. in captivity mm -hmm. rather than wild. Some of that is from diet. Some of that is also just the conditions yeah. that the fish are in. So water clarity is going to make patterns pop out. More. Sure. And so will a dark background. If you gave them a little bit of time to acclimate, they get that horizontal stripe. Are you shitting and me? And most fish can change their color like that. Whether you're a gar, a trout, bass, sculpin, any of those guys can cool. change pretty fast. Native species, they're living in our most valuable natural resource, fresh mm -hmm. water. You know, we're not going anywhere without fresh water. We're sure. lucky to have as much as we do here in Minnesota, mm -hmm. in the Great Lakes or in the Midwest. Um, so we need to do what we can to take care of it. But by supporting conservation efforts, whether that's just increasing awareness of the value of these native species, yeah. that helps because they're some of the best indicators to that health of our fresh water. You know, for as lighthearted as shore lunch mm -hmm. always is, mm -hmm. These are important conversations to have. I can be, you know, holed up in the lab all day, you know, working on samples or something like that. But if people don't know what they can do to help or why this stuff is important, yeah. then it doesn't go anywhere. So Believe. what you all do is extremely valuable to that effort. You hear that, America? I'm valuable, and this is from a scientist. I feel like Mr. Rogers in one of his uh, neat segments that he'd go do behind the scenes at, like, the crayon factory. Mm -hmm. Serious. This is my crayon factory. Solomon? Dr. David, 
Thank you a million Maybe. times. Happy to be here. I would like to invite you someday to be on the show together because yeah, this be is awesome. so cool and so important. Now, do we just flush these down the toilet? Yeah, then? I mean, most of them we do. We usually chop them up. That way they go down the drain a little oh, bit better. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah.